a lot of the premise that we worked on was that was that ultimately we're not necessarily reinventing the wheel. Um, as you say, inside sales exists, and it's not that the actual process of taking a customer, you know, marketing messages you know, to to sale is fundamentally broken. The real challenge is that it's inefficient. And when you look at, say, a salesperson's time and they're spending 55, 60% of it on generating the conversations, it doesn't leave a huge amount of time for actually having the conversations, which is, you know, and it's, it's what good salespeople do. You know, they're great at selling to other people. And so it's, it's often a fairly um, straightforward conversation. I mean, most of our uh, sales team, for example, you know, they, they've worked in sales previously. They see the benefit that a SOFO campaign brings to them because they're working off leads. And it's really easy to articulate that to any B2B business that has a sales team or has a, a sales bandwidth challenge. You know, could be could be a sales team, could be a, a founder owner. Um, but yeah, it's I think I think the core is that it's it's solving a problem that everyone is aware they have, and it is that lack of time and efficiency in the process um, that makes it work. Yeah, I mean, if we've always taken a very KPI-driven approach to managing the business, and really it grows from that. You know, everything has been about you know. Uh, because if, if you break everything down to a per prospect level, yeah, we can look at the price per prospect, what that breaks down into. And so at, at the very start, it was our core business KPIs. And then as we've grown and established the separate departments, each department had their own set of KPIs, which then roughly translates down, I say roughly, exactly translates down into a resource matrix. Um, and there are that some departments are very specific, you know, number of clients, per person in our client success department. Um, similarly, in our operations department, although it's worked out based on delivery sizes. But, but I think the one thing that, that has always been very deliberate is establishing those KPIs and having those common across the business. Everyone knows what those KPIs are. And naturally, the matrix of resources follows from that. The you're onto something moment, I think, was just when we, it was the reception to the proposition. We put the pitch out to the market. Um, we didn't have to contact too many businesses before we had um, some, you know, some signed contracts and clients to, to then worry about how we, how we were going to deliver. Um, but then I think the, the milestones then, for me personally, and Rob might have a different take on this, the, the, the things that have dramatically changed the business have been the introduction of each additional uh, department. And so obviously in the early days, you know, Rob and I, we were tech, finance, operations, client services, and everything in between. Um, and then slowly but surely, you know, we, we, we found support to, to help with delivery. Um, and, you know, and that be began to be um, the makings of our operations team. Um, once we'd, um, you know, we, we 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 had a way to 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 deliver the service without Rob and myself being uh, heavily involved, then we were able to, you know, sort of turn our attention more to sales, and and then we we brought somebody in to head up sales, um, and again, that's you know another thirty percent of, of of kind of my my day was all of a sudden, or fifty percent of my day probably at the time it was freed up to to then start looking at, at the other things, and it, and each time you know so bringing in the, um, those departments. So it was, I think after sales, it was then client services. You know, we started to have um, you know, sales coming in, we were able to deliver the service and, and then all of a sudden we had a lot of relationships that we needed to manage and start looking at, you know, how do we reduce retention and churn and make sure that the experience is, is living out, you know, it's up to scratch. Um, so then, then it was CS. We were, I think we were concurrently building a more and more of a tech team um, along the side. Along the side, I mean, the tech team is probably close to close to fifty people now. Um, but the, I mean, it's the, the, those real the, the, the things that, that I remember more than anything else were, were just the introduction of each new department because it just each time kind of radically transformed um, the business. Um, and, and certainly from a sort of founder's perspective, it, you know, mm. it's Rob and uh, Rob and I. So first of all, totally uh, relate to the question. I remember it really well. So many scenarios, and and our, and our approach now is is wildly different to what it was when we were kind of you know, learning the ropes in in the earlier days. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things we, we, we very much present ourselves as an agency. It is a service. Um, and of course, you then have conversations where what you're offering isn't exactly what someone, or, you know, someone's looking for, or they've got an idea that maybe you could kind of do that. But also, could you do this as well? And you're looking at it and, you know, on the face of it, well, I, I suppose we could do that. You know, it is possible. Um, <laughs> you know, that, if that's what it takes to sign the contract. Um, and pretty much I can't remember I can't remember too many scenarios where kind of that deviation from a, a really slick standardized business model um that deviation to something that the client wanted didn't end in a pretty much an unmitigated disaster because it was either um you know it wasn't exactly what you know delivered exactly what they wanted or we realized that it was much harder than, than we perhaps initially thought and maybe that's why they were asking for, for it in the first place but um you you are you're juggling a few things you're always balancing uh, particularly in the early days you know the, the kind of cash flow demands and you know we, we, we really would be great to win another client do you, you know do you have the confidence to push back and say no this is how it needs to be done you know if, you know, if you're concerned you might lose the client um so yeah we we certainly went through um a number of um hard lessons i think I to describe it on uh, in doing that, and and now it's just a, a blanket policy. You know, we've got you know exactly there is one best way to do prospecting. That's what we offer. Um, we'd love an opportunity to, to convince you on that, but if it really isn't um, what what you're looking for, then you know then that's fine. And uh, yeah, and, and we know that we're in no danger of, of sort of disappointing you um, by committing to something that's not because um, yeah, we have a framework to deliver uh, what we do, and, and that's one of the reasons it works so well. Um, yeah, anything to add to that, Rob? It's no, on, on a personal level, it's, it's one of the uh, probably the most successful things about mine and Ryan's personal relationship. My, my natural instincts, I want to build everything. So when a client says, "Can we do this?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." And Ryan's always been very good at kind of tempering that with, right, because um, because because some things are genuinely good ideas, and you can that idea help a hundred clients rather than just this client. Great maybe we can find a way to incorporate it into the service but the vast majority of ideas are no it's going to help just this one client and it's not going to work so yeah I, I, yeah personally i probably would have made far more of these kind of mistakes and yeah, but at the same time we have taken maybe the two or three percent of genuinely really good ideas incorporated them into the service and and improve things overall <laughs> 